Let's take a look at the polling uh, that Jennifer just mentioned uh, the, between the difference between the Clarence Thomas situation and the Brett Kavanaugh situation. I think we have it uh, up on the screen, but more people actually uh, believed uh, uh, Clarence Thomas they, uh, over Anita Hill. Anita Hill uh, was only believed by 24 percent. Clarence Thomas was believed by 40 percent 27 years ago. Now, Christine Blasey Ford is believed by 45 percent. She is, of all the four people we're talking about here, the person who has been believed the most in real time when it was happening, 45 percent. Brett Kavanaugh, uh, fewer people believe Brett Kavanaugh than believed Clarence Thomas, uh, down to 33 percent. And so, Lisa, that is a kind of grim polling picture of a very slow progress. Well, I think what you pointed out before is that we have a counter-democratic institution in the Senate that now is installing someone who is uh, disliked by most American people to an institution, the Supreme Court, that is not subject to real democratic check by the people. Um, and in the face of what we've seen, uh, even with the fears I think many people had after the election in 2016 of Donald Trump and the potential vacancies in the Supreme Court, I don't think anyone thought that he would somehow find a man so close to his image in terms of the lying, in terms of being accused so credibly of sexual assault, in terms of the partisanship and uh, putting forth uh, baseless conspiracy theories. But here we stand. And I think the American women, are not, uh, American women in this country and men are not going to stand for that. I think we're seeing a, a rising, a surge. And I I think that in 2018 and 2020, uh, women and men are going to unite to repel and repudiate uh, what's happening today, this weekend in Washington, and what's happening to deny our democracy, uh, the full measure of our democracy through many of these senators uh, in that United States Senate and the injustice that they're doing right now. As the uh, accident of timing would have it, uh, Sonia Sotomayor and Elena Kagan uh, both appeared at Princeton at a, as a, at a panel discussion there. Uh, they're both graduates from Princeton, they did that today. I want to listen to uh, Justice Sotomayor uh, talking about the institutional reputation uh, now for the Supreme Court and how the court holds on to legitimacy in this atmosphere and what a challenge that is. Let's listen to that. I think we have a chance of holding on to our legitimacy. As Elena says, though, we're each going to have to think about how to do that and, and how to implement and support um, our institutional reputation. Uh, and Jennifer, that institutional reputation seems like more of a challenge than ever. Yeah, I mean, and it's so it's so um, so brain to hear her say we have a chance of holding on yes, to the integrity just a of the institution. Yeah. Just just a chance. And the one thing that I I have not been able to move beyond is understanding that when Brett Kavanaugh walked into the hearing room last week, he thought he was done. He spoke of his nomination in the past tense. He talked about what when I still believe there's a chance I would be confirmed. So, you know, one piece he left out of his op-ed that he gave to the journal was, you know, the truth, which was that the airing I gave in the uh, Judiciary Committee was when I thought I was going to lose. Even he thought that the Republicans would not confirm him after what they heard. But despite what they heard from Christine Blasey Ford, and despite the very partisan and what I found truly shocking uh, testimony that he gave on uh, last week, the Republicans con continued on and, and gave them their uh, their approval and you know and now you're at a situation where you have a United States Supreme Court justice in the face of Sonia Sotomayor saying we have a chance of holding on to the, that integrity in that court. Jennifer Valmer and Lisa Graves thank you both for joining our discussion tonight really appreciate it. Thank you. Sir. And when we come back the women who helped Senator Lisa Mur